Hello! So today I'm going to be talking about Yellow Face by R.F. Kuang. This is the second book by R.F. Kuang I have read, the first being Babel. I thought Babel was good, but not great. And I believe this is her first published piece of literary fiction, stepping away from the fantasy genre. Her first published books were the Poppy War trilogy, which is high fantasy, and Babel is kind of a form of dark academia fantasy. The themes in this novel are racism, identity politics, plagiarism, cultural appropriation, council culture, slash trial by social media. This is a book for those of you who are interested in the world of books and publishing. I mean, there is so much in it for everyone to enjoy, and I think everyone will learn and get something from this book. But I think the dividing factor between you thinking it's very good to excellent will be in how interested you are in seeing the publishing industry laid bare. A cheeky peek behind the magician's cloth. In this novel, we follow June Hayward, a published writer whose work seems to have gone nowhere. Pretty much forgotten about by her agent. June is struggling and her family doesn't understand why doesn't she just get a real job. June is forever in the shadow of her university friend, Athena. Athena is Asian and she has become a book industry darling for writing stories that explore and examine the histories of Asian people. Athena is uber successful and everything that June wants to be as a writer. At the start of the book, the two spend an evening drinking and June is wandering around Athena's apartment and she sees a finished manuscript for Athena's next book. Now, Athena is well known for never ever letting anyone, absolutely anyone, even her agents, her publishers, no one gets to read her manuscripts until the first draft is done. In this moment, June is the first person to read a single word of Athena's new work. And from reading just the first line, June knows that this new book is going to be an absolute hit. Then suddenly, a freak accident kills Athena. June attempts to save her. She does try to save her, but she is unsuccessful. And in a moment of madness, June decides to steal Athena's finished manuscript. She types up the manuscript and makes many, many changes along the way, things that she think would make it work better, and in essence, finishing the novel. At the start, she's doing this as a homage to Athena, a way of bringing her work to life and finishing it. But then, in that process of changing it, she starts to believe that the work has become her own. She starts to think that it is her novel and decides to publish it in her own name. And this is when we start stepping into that idea of the ship of Theseus. And if you are unfamiliar with the ship of Theseus thought experiment, it's about whether an object that has had all of its original components replaced is still the same object. If a ship goes off on a five year journey and by the time it gets all the way back home, every single piece of that ship has been replaced, is it still the same ship? Now, a lot of Athena's original manuscript is still in June's published work, but I believe she is playing that game with herself. She is convincing herself that by making these changes, by changing it, it has become her work. The rest of the novel is a deep dive into June getting the novel published. The press tours, the social media, everything that comes with trying to make the book a success. And June does in fact become an overnight sensation. We dive deep into examining who has the right to tell stories. Stories that aren't necessarily your own. Now my personal standpoint is that anyone, absolutely anyone, has the right to tell any story. As long as it is well researched and handles its subject matter, its themes and material with sensitivity. If you have put in the research, if you have spoken to the people who had those experiences in whatever story you might be writing, you do have the right to bring that to life. Whether it is your story or whether the heritage of what's happening in it is not your own, you have the right to do that. But you've got to make it good. <laughs> it has to be well researched and it has to be handled with care and sensitivity. I think if you're doing all those things, then yes, anyone, absolutely anyone has the right to tell any story. But I do totally understand if you 100% disagree with my standpoint. But this idea gets twisted even further when June's publishers start suggesting that she changes her name. They want her to go from June Hayward to June Song using her middle name as her last name. As they believe, without overtly saying it, it sounds a little bit more Asian. June gets headshots taken that make her ethnicity somewhat hard to pin down. So even her publishers are leaning into the idea that in order to sell this piece of work about Asian experiences, it would be best if her audiences thought that she was possibly could be Asian. And we spend most of this novel with June trying to justify every single decision she makes. So much so that it becomes very overwhelming. 
She is the pinnacle of an unreliable narrator, so obsessed with the limelight that she will do anything and she will justify any of her actions in order to keep it. Now, I don't want to spoil too many plot beats in this novel, but I am going to tell you that the idea June stole the novel from Athena starts to float around on the internet, challenging June's newfound status and building the tension in the novel. So, what did I like and what didn't I like? What I liked. It's extremely thought-provoking in a really good way. It was bringing to light all of the topics that I found myself discussing with my colleagues at work and my students over the past two years. In fact, it is packed to the gills with ideas and choices being made that really make you stop as a reader and question the ethics of all players involved. Now, I'm a big reader and I know a little bit, just a little bit about the publishing industry, but I loved R.F. Quang's choice to tell a story that lays bare the publishing industry through the ideas of cultural appropriation and plagiarism. She's done a fantastic job of just blending and balancing those two themes together brilliantly. It's a real page turner. The writing is solid and flows really well. I really like that even though June is actually quite an awful person, really self-obsessed, she isn't without sympathetic qualities. I think I would have stopped reading if June was out and out evil, and I think Kwong treads that line, that balance with her beautifully. We get to know June so well that even her awful decisions do have justification in her world. And finally, this is one of the best books that I have read about council culture or the kind of trial by social media. It levels every element brilliantly and we really start to feel overwhelmed as a reader on the pressure social media can have on its target. What didn't I like? Okay, now this isn't exactly a dislike, but it is, but it isn't, and that sounds a bit wish-washy, but I feel like this book works better if you exist within the internet book world. If you're the type of person who follows booktube, follows lots of reviewers, reads lots of articles about books, reviews on books, you know what Goodreads is, you understand what the Goodreads Choice Awards are, all of those things, then this book is just going to hit home for you a little bit better than anyone else. As the kids would say, it's spilling the tea. And the more access you have to this kind of niche book world, internet book world, uh, the more Easter eggs, the more things you're going to find in this novel that are really going to hit home and are just going to enrich it even more. It's not not going to work if you're not in that world, but it will work better if you are. But that's it for dislikes. I thought this book was excellent and I'm going to be thinking about it for quite some time. I'm going to give it four stars out of five. I think whether you love or hate this book, it is going to make you think about the complexities of the publishing industry and who has the right to tell what stories. Have you read this book? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Please let me know in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you all on the next one. Bye.